Hello and welcome to Bluffton High School for tonight's non-conference showdown on WOSN. I'm Evan Skilleter alongside Mark Shine, and tonight it's the Bluffton Pirates hosting the Elida Bulldogs, two teams with double-digit wins, two teams that are sniffing the playoffs, but before that, Mark Shine, it is non-conference time on a Tuesday night. Well, you know what I think, Evan? I think this is a really, really good situation because both of these teams, we're on a Tuesday night. We're 10 days away from the regular season coming to an end, and they have chosen to play really quality competition this evening. Uh, they're both somewhat in the race of their conference, uh, you know, up near the top of it anyway, and yet they are choosing to play somebody really good that will help prepare them for the tournament. It's an interesting matchup this evening. Absolutely. The Pirates come in tonight 15-4, and 5-2 and two in the Northwest Conference. Now, they've hit a rough patch. They've lost a couple of their last few, but I'll tell you what, this Pirate team is fantastic. Tell me about them. Well, they've been really, really good uh, at both ends of the floor, but especially offensively. They've been leading the Northwest Conference in scoring. For most of the year, they've got really good balance. It's really nice to see Merrick Donaldson back. I know he missed about six games with his illness. Good to see him back. He's probably rounding into better shape than he was a weekend ago. That's a good thing. They've got really good size inside with Blake Summers and what he's able to do. Leading the team is scoring at 14.6. Then you've got Wade Ginter and you've got you know, Bob Lick and you've got other Summers. They've got a really nice basketball team with a lot of balance. Good, good for them. We'll see how they play this evening. And on the other side, wearing the orange uniforms tonight, the Western Buckeye League's Elida Bulldogs. The Bulldogs come into this evening 13-5, and 5-2 and two in the Western Buckeye League, gearing up for their first playoff game in a, about a week's time. But what do we see from Elida? Well, their defensive pressure is outstanding on the perimeter. Uh, between Zori Island and Amari Wash, they are really, really good at pressuring guards on the perimeter, and they have to be. They don't have great size inside Parker Krim. Uh, is goes about you know six foot or so, six two. He's a strong physical player, but he's not. Uh, he's a sophomore. He's not a polished player yet inside. So the interior game has not always been really good for Elida, but their defensive perimeter pressure is very good. They shoot the ball very well on the perimeter, and quite honestly, if Wash, Island, Seth Sharp, um, in, in some cases, that scoring, when those guys get out in transition, they are really, really good. They're solid defensively. I think this is a really interesting matchup because of their defense against how well Bluffton plays offensively. Absolutely. We are going to step aside, but stay tuned. When we return, it's the starting lineups and the opening tip right here on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard is sponsored by Web Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and Bluffton. We welcome you back to Bluffton High School as the starting lineups are being read. We'll get them for you as well. We'll start with the visiting Elida Bulldogs wearing some sharp orange uniforms tonight. They start with junior Zori Island averaging 9.8 points per game. Seth Sharp, the senior, averaging 5.5. Amari Wash. The sophomore averaging 12 points per game. Averaging 6.6 .6 is Jackson Koval, the senior. And rounding out the starting lineup is David Etzkorn, the senior averaging 11.2 points per game. On the other side for the Bluffton Pirates wearing the white uniforms tonight, they start with junior Merrick Donaldson. He's six foot one and averages 13.8 points per game. They also start with Wade Ginther, the 6'1 senior at 11 and a half points per game. Taryn Boblett, the 6'1 junior, averaging 6.4 a game. Blake Summers, the junior, 6'5", 14.6 .6 points per game. And rounding out the starting lineup is number 32, John Paul Yoder, 6'4", averaging 4.9 points per game. Mark Sean, I'm excited for this one. I know we talked about it in the pregame show, but these are two really good teams and two teams at full strength, which we haven't seen from the Bluffton Pirates for quite a while. Uh, a little bit. That's that's correct because Greg Donaldson has been out, of course, and uh, you mentioned one other player who's been out. Was that Yoder? Brody, Brody Summers Brody has been Summers, out, okay, and John Paul out. Yoder's yes. was, was out for for a little bit as well. So Parker Krim had a, a knee situation. I see he's got a brace on him. He's playing. He's not starting the season, but Parker Krim will play for Elida. And it's the Pirates starting with the ball. Ginther at the elbow. Now dribbles inside, has it stripped, gets it back, misses the lay-in. Second effort up and good with the left hand as the first basket of the game scored by the Pirates. Well, right there you saw pow to the basket on the rebound, and then you see Elida just what they want to do, get down and score before the defense is set. That was Amari Wash, found a lane, and if he has a lane, you know he's going to go through it. 2-2 the score now. 
Get there to Donaldson. He'll shoot from out there. Not enough space that time. Now Summers, that's Blake Summers, misses off the front. Donaldson comes in for the rebound. Fakes once, goes up, puts it in. Second offensive rebound basket for the Bulldogs, or for the Pirates here early on. The Bulldogs go in transition. They move the ball quickly. Here's a pull up three from David Etzcorn. That's no good, but the rebound pulled in by Koval. Koval working against Blake Summers, gets it out to Wash. Bulldogs 13 and five this season, five and two in a tough Western Buckeye League. That's going to Kovalt. That three is good. Jackson Kovalt got his feet set and lined that one up. Puts his team up a point. Jackson Kovalt, the senior, averages six and a half points per game. 11 threes this season. Make it 12 after that one. Donaldson guarded tightly by Zori Island. Passes it to the feet of Ginther, who's able to grab it. Skip to Summers. Summers thought about one. Get their curls off a screen. Now Donaldson. Pirates taking their time. Mid-range jumper from Boblet, no good. Yoder with the rebound, goes inside. He's fouled and the basket's good. Same scenario, missed one from the perimeter. Get an offensive rebound, go back up and score. This is a chance for an and one. And here comes Parker Krim. I think Coach Tabor says we need somebody on the defensive glass. Officials tonight, Jeff Rex, Mike Basinger, Steve Oren. Veteran crew as Seth Sharp steps, sits down. Parker Krim, the sophomore, averaging 3.6 points per game. More than his scoring. They rely heavily on that size inside, like you said, as Yoder makes the free throw. His physical presence inside, rebounding the basketball and clogging things up defensively. Looks like we're seeing some zone from Bluffton. Pirates look to be in a 1-2-2 two, two type zone. Donaldson taking the high post. Ball in the corner with Koval. They get the ball to Krim. That's the pass you're supposed to take away. Now the shot from three, no good. Island missing it, Summers with the rebound. Now Boblet quickly the other way. Ginther, good control inside as he finishes to give his team the 9-5 lead. Got to pass out of the double team. That opened up a spot to go to the rim. By the way, a free throw taken just moments ago. Our free throw sponsor tonight, Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Make sure to call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Blake Summers picked up that foul. Here's Island in the corner. He's double teamed, gets it away. Wash, floater, no good. Fight for the board, and there he is, Parker Krim on cue, but not able to finish the shot. Boblet tracks it down. Yeah, that's what he's in there for. He just missed a stick back. That's the 9 5 lead. Pirates go with a four high look. Boblet wide open, not a guy you want to leave, but he misses it off the front. Donaldson tries to track it down, but hits it out of bounds. 9-5 early on here, 4.43 to play in the first quarter on the Web Insurance Agency scoreboard. And we've got Landon Worcester checking in for the Pirates. Worcester, an all-state linebacker, a fantastic running back, and a guy that provides some spark off the bench for the Pirates here as Brody Summers checks in as well. Twin brother of Blake. They'll both play in the post in this 1-2-2 two, two look. Used the trap out of the corner with his own now. Good seal from Krim, but the shot no good. Ginther grabs the rebound. The Pirates were on a roll for most of the season. Only one loss. And it was to Ottawa Glandorf here early as Worcester gets inside, nice dump to Brody Summers. He's fouled. And we'll get some more least famous recipe chicken free throws. And the Pirates hit that energy, or, sorry, the injury stretch and still made it through that unblemished, but ran into a buzzsaw in Spencerville. And well, that Spencerville game that went to overtime, what a tremendous mm. high school basketball game that was. And then the next night they played that very good Pandora Gilboa team, and it was close into the end of the third quarter. And 
I think the emotion from the night before and the overtime and so on kind of got to the Pirates and that plus, you know, uh, Donaldson was just coming back. He wasn't full strength yet and all those types of things. So they, they had a really tough weekend. This is a good basketball team going into the playoffs, though. Summers misses that one off the front, and Blake almost grabs the rebound. Instead, it falls to Sharp. Now Wash, little Euro step off the glass, no good, but he comes up with the rebound. Here's Etzcorn. He goes inside, and his pass out of reach of Sharp. The First. Pirates last weekend, I'm sorry, Mark, Friday dropped another one. That was to Columbus Grove, which dropped their NWC record to 5-2. and two. And Then responded by beating Riverdale on Saturday. If you have seen Columbus Grove, they play as good as their competition. Mm. Uh, they, they play well against the good teams and maybe not quite as well against teams that you say, wow, oh, nice slip screen. Worcester wow. goes up and finishes. He hangs in the air as well. That was really pretty. Wash the other way, pass tipped. Donaldson all alone, goes up, lays it in. 13-5 the score now as the Pirates go on a run. Well, that time it was the other way around. Pirates get a turnover and a run out. Here's Krim. Gets inside, goes up. No pressure from Summers as he scores. Well, you can see his strength inside, Parker Krim. Krim with his first bucket, 13-7 the score. Summers has a little space and puts it in. What a luxury when your 6'5 forward can hit from the wing like that. His defender went under the screen that left him open for the three. First basket for Summers, who's the leading scorer on this Pirate team at 14.6 points per game. And another turnover, make it three. Eli is going to run a sub in, too, as they're going to bring in number 13, Kovald again. Also, Evan Jackson will enter. Amari Wash and Seth Sharp will make way for the two substitutions. You can see uh, Bluff has not turned the basketball over yet, and because of that, Eli is not able to get out in transition. Backdoor cut. And wow. it works. Are they on the cylinder right now? Coach Tabler decides he's not going to take a timeout right now as the Pirates take another one away. Donaldson goes up, and it's blocked by Zori Island. The Pirates will get it underneath. They are functioning so well in the half court. Their execution, they've run a backdoor cut. They've run a slip screen backdoor cut. They've got a, got a shot behind a three-point line from behind a great screen. They are really functioning well in the offensive end right now. Deep three from Donaldson. No good. Jackson pulls down the rebound. 2.15 to play in the first quarter. Krim goes inside. Not enough contact. Evan Jackson to the rim, and he's blocked. Hey, want to thank our premier sponsor for Elida tonight, Dr. John Stocker, DDS, providing dental care for high school sports fans. Elida basketball underneath as Blake Summers sent that one to the wall. Almost hit our guy Richard Parrish over there. Hmm. There's Zori Island. Thought about a three, now gives it up to Etzcorn. Etzcorn, nice hesitation as he gets inside, not able to finish. Ball batted around, eventually tipped to Worcester. Worcester goes up and he's fouled. That'll be the first foul against Zori Island, the third against Elida. And we'll have two more Lee's Famous Recipe chicken free throws well, you've for the seen, Pirates. Uh, Evan, that Bluffton is able to score on their offensive rebound second chances. That's not been the case for Elida. Free throw up and good from Landon Worcester. 5'10 junior, 4.7 points per game. 67% free throw shooter. Gets one of two there. See, Evan Jackson's got a couple of rebounds here in just a couple minutes he's played. Here's Koval, and another pass almost taken away. Krim gets inside. Krim goes up with a nice little head fake, and he's able to score over Summers. And now Coach Tabler will take a Metzger Financial Services timeout. We'll take it with him, 128 on the clock here in the first quarter. 
Pirates with a 10-point, 19-9 lead. We'll be right back. Tonight's free throws are sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. 19-9 here in Bluffton as the Pirates out to an early lead. And they are firing on all cylinders, really on both ends of the basketball. They really are. Elijah's going to try to kick them out of that right now with a 1-2-2 two, two trap, and they got one. That's Etzcorn with the steal. Etzcorn goes up. He's not able to hit the layup. Looked like he might have had some contact. Either way, Pirates get it, and they're coming the other way. Donaldson floats it up right with the alley-oop. Really well-timed pass, catch, and score. What looked like an Elida basket, we're going to get the fifth turnover with a travel. Kerry Wright with his first basket. He's a 6'2 senior and a guy that Coach Bobbitt relies on heavily for a spark off the bench. He plays great defense. He'll get a couple baskets for you on offense. And right there in the right spot at the right time. What's well, a very young basketball team, really, just three seniors. You mentioned Kerry Wright, Wade Ginther, John Paul Yoder. Okay. A lot of their offense, defense, and rebounding comes from people who are not seniors, so a really good future coming up. And congratulations to the Pirates freshman team. They won their freshman tournament over at Ottawa Glandorf this evening. Ginther gets inside, can't roll it in. Krim there under the basket to meet him as Koval goes the other way. Here's Wash in the corner. Wash, nice pass to Jackson. Jackson goes up, powers it in. And a good little run out of the timeout for Elida. They've scored four straight. We pass inside off the penetration dribble. Summers for three. That's no good. Good box out from Krim as Kovalt runs it down. Left a good shooter open. Nine seconds left in the quarter. Wash over to Kovalt. Wash goes to the corner. It was open. Now gets inside off glass. Too hard. Follow up is good as the clock. Hits zero, a nice 6 nothing run for Elida as they get back to within single digits. They trail 21-13 on the Web Insurance Agency scoreboard as we step aside. Second quarter coming up after this on WOSN. Tonight's premier sponsor for the Elida Bulldogs is John Stocker DDS providing dental care for high school sports fans. Tonight's scoreboard is sponsored by Webb Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and Bluffton. 21 to 13 on that Webb Insurance Agency scoreboard. Evan Skilleter and Mark Shine with you from Bluffton. And a good quarter for the Pirates, but a good run to end that quarter for the Bulldogs to get back close. Bluffton's eight of 13 from two point range and one of four from uh, outside the arc, they have missed six shots, and they have four offensive rebounds. Only one turnover, five turnovers for the Bulldogs. Almost number six, but Wash able to track it down. Here's Island. Island to the rack, through contact, puts it in, and a chance for a three-point play and to get his team back to within five. Zori took the ball with his left hand, went through traffic, and scored. I think another interesting part about this, Evan, you know, the Pirates scored the 21 in the opening quarter. This is a lighter team that only gives up about 53 points a game on this uh, on the season. So uh, way, way, way above their typical defensive average, thanks to the excellent offensive execution for the Bluffton Pirates. And the Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw goes in. It's that half-court trap again, which helped him at the end of the quarter. That's three points for Zori Island. Pirates working to break, they do. Summers in the corner, gives it back up to Ginther. Imagine Coach Boblet wants to see a nice long possession end with a nice shot. That one knocked away. Pirates will have it underneath. Edscorn stepped up to stop the penetration, a dribble by Blake Summers, and then got knocked out of bounds by Island. Staying in 2-3 zone here. 
Ball in for Boblet. Donaldson, no one around him, and he makes no mistake. Coach Tabler not happy yeah. he was left alone. That's the best shooter in the gym. They lost the baseline help who was supposed to step up and help on that. Crim to the rack, he can't finish. Pirates out in transition. Ginther behind the back. Ginther has it stripped. But it's taken away as Amari Wash couldn't get the handle after the strip. Good transition defense from the Bulldogs, though. Koval back in. Parker Krim takes a seat. See what they do defensively. And we're going half court trapping and dropping into their 2 3. Just has a man to man look to it. They are in man. They switch on a lot of things on the perimeter. Deep three from Donaldson. That's no good. Now outside, Etzcorn. Etzcorn spins in, lost the handle, gets it back. Now Island. Runs into the trees, passes it off his teammate's head. Shot no good. It's about to call the assist to Seth Sharp off the forehead. 24-16. Ricochet to Kovalt, who got a good look at it, just missed a shot. Ball tipped away as Ginther gathers it. Island guarding Donaldson. Two minutes into the second quarter. New Summers. Tried to run a high-low post to Yoder down inside. Now Donaldson pulls up, in and out, rebound, Koval. Koval, no one stops him as he goes right to the rim and puts it in. <laughs> you mentioned Coach Tabor a minute ago, and as soon as that happened, Coach Boblin needed a sub. Somebody missed a man trying to pick up Koval, and he went right to the rack and scored. There's Taryn Boblet. Taryn gets inside, he goes up, no good. Loose ball, tracked down by John Paul Yoder. Now a three from Summers goes. Another second chance opportunity basket. Had a lot of them early in quarter one. There's one in this quarter too. And Krim right back to the scorer's table. Kovalt misses the floater. Ginther, Donaldson, nice hesitation, but it's knocked away. Summers wanted to try again, now steps into a midi. And he gets it to go. What a really pretty looking one dribble move to finish there, make the lead up to 11. Get that ball fake and go by the defender from the three point line. Now Wash, Kovalt, mid range jumper, no good. Good ball move, but just missed the shot on the baseline. And Coach Boblet. Calls for a Metzger Financial Services timeout. We'll take it as well. It's 29-18, Bluffton on top at home. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Metzger Financial Services timeout taken by Coach Todd Boblett, longtime head coach here in Bluffton, 18th season for Todd Boblett, and his team leads 29-18. It's become kind of the in vogue thing. You take a timeout halfway through quarter number two. Nice move. Worcester with the basket. You know, I wonder if he plays football. I wonder. Uh, he had a little bit of strength, like maybe he's been on a football field <laughs> before. Pirates with a great football season. Now looking forward to the playoffs in basketball. Here's Wash. Lida gearing up for their tournament run as well. Krim inside. Jumper from the elbow. That's no good. Elida kind of cold here in the second quarter. See that middle of that one, two, two zone is open. Parker Krim's able to get the ball inside there, but not able to do much with it when he gets a hold of it. Could a nice pass that time, but his teammate couldn't finish. Summers yeah, travel. traveled. Trapped by Krim and David Etzcorn. Slides that pivot foot. 
the Elida basketball. League games for both of these teams coming up this weekend. Elida goes to Van Wert, and Alan East is in this gym. Two more weeks of the league season, two more Friday nights, I should say, the league season. See the Van Wert coaching staff here scouting Elida up in the top right corner of the gym. Krim inside. Krim goes up and Summers with the block. Except that he's called for a foul. Referee says body underneath. That happens a lot, Mark Shine. You see yeah. a nice clean block up top, but people forget mm -hmm. if that body slides in and displaces the offensive player, you're going to get called. That's exactly what happened. Parker Krim has struggled a bit the free throw line this season, but not on that one. Dead center with that. This team needed it too. Don't forget your free throws this evening, sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Krim gets one of two. Pirates lead 31-19 on the Web Insurance Agency scoreboard. Here's Donaldson, Ginther, back to Donaldson. That ball almost taken away. Pirates able to keep it in. Here's Ginther. I, I think that's one you just saw Coach Table react to because that ball Amari Wash typically gets and takes off to the other end. He was just a half a step slow in his anticipation, and Bluffton kept possession of the basketball. Playing zone now. The Pirates taking their time against it. 12-point lead. High post to carry right. Ginther back to right. Good patience from the Pirates. And on the fly, Elida switched to man to man. Krim knocks it away. Picked up by Island. He goes coast to coast. A nice soft balance lefty layup. Just a second Pirate turnover of the basketball game. And, you know, we played 14 minutes. That's the first time they had a really run out in a long time. Ginther has it stripped. It's Zyland again, and Island with the easy layup. Two straight turnovers, two straight baskets. It's 31-23. And Coach Boblett will take a Metzger Financial Services timeout to try to slow the run. We'll step aside with 145 remaining at 31-23. Tonight's free throws are sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. John Stocker DDS is tonight's premier sponsor for the Elida Bulldogs, providing dental care for high school sports fans. Welcome back to Bluffton High School. 31-23, the Pirate lead, but the second nice run for Elida here in the last few minutes has found them back to within single digits. Pirates break the pressure. And another steal. Island with it again. Nice pass ahead in the layup. Good. Amari Wash with the bucket. He has six points. You know, that was all set up by Parker Krim. He got back and defended Brody Summers, who thought he had a layup. He didn't turn into a turnover, another run out. Donaldson goes inside, tries to go up, but he's fouled. That'll be the first foul against Amari Wash. And it was not of the shooting variety, so the Pirates will have it underneath. Yeah, Koval got his hand on the ball, and that's why it was not the call. The call was on Wash. Big run here. Three turnovers, got the lead down to six. And Deep three from Boblet, no good. And two guys fight for the rebound. It falls to Koval. Koval going the other way. Koval goes up and scores. It's back to a four-point game, folks. Good hustle on the rebound. And he once again went coast to coast. That's happened a couple times with Koval, where he doesn't get picked up and gets himself to the rim in transition. Under a minute to play. Donaldson off the flare screen. And that one's no good. Summers trying to track it down. He's able to keep it in, but it's off Elida. And they're headed the other way with Etzcorn. 
Deep three coming, Island gets it! 31-30. What a huge run here by the, the Bulldogs here at the end of the half. Ginther can't finish at the rack. Boblick grabs the rebound, mid-range jumper goes up. It's no good. Ginther, though, able to stop the run. 33-30, 10 seconds to go. Island kicks it out. Omari Wash, mid-range jumper. That's no good. One second. Deep shot up and will not go. And so the Pirates make it to halftime. But would you say limped in as it's 33-30. Pirates and Bulldogs will regroup. We will as well. Second half coming up after this on WOSN. Welcome back to Bluffton High School. We're about a minute away from the start of the second half. The Pirates lead 33-30 over the visiting Elida Bulldogs. Evan Skilleter and Mark Schein with you. Jacob O'Neill on the camera this evening. Mark Schein, uh, the Pirates had a couple stretches where they had a big lead, but they have not been able to put the Bulldogs away. And a lot of that has to do with that second quarter and some of those turnovers. It really did. It was a double-figure lead for a while. But if you look at the, the total overall numbers for the half, Elida was 11 of 26 from the two-point area, where Bluffton was 11 of 20. Elida is two for five from the three-point line, where Eli uh, Bluffton is three for nine. Each team made two free throws. Elida took three, and Bluffton took five. Rebounding goes to Bluffton, 19-17. They each had seven offensive rebounds. Five turnovers for Elida, four for Bluffton. But the tail actually came in the last three minutes because Elida did not turn the basketball one time. Not one time they turned over in quarter number two. Bluffton turned over three times in the last couple of minutes. You might have made a nice run. They outscored Bluffton 17-12 in the quarter, and we're back to a three-point game. Leading all scorers so far this evening is Merrick Donaldson with nine. Right behind him is Blake Summers from Bluffton with eight. And I'm sorry, not leading all scorers, just leading the Bluffton scorers because Ori Island has 10 right now for Elida to lead all scorers. Now Ginther has it poked away, and it is a turnover just like that. Elida picks, off, picks up where they left off, and Amari Wash with the first bucket of the half. They tried to run the slip screen right out of the, the shoot coming here into the half, and Island got a steal and coasted down the floor, and that's when they are at their best, getting out, transition, and going. Donaldson off glass, no good. Yoder goes up on the follow, no good. Good defense inside from Parker Krim, who didn't start the game, but starts here in the second half. Outside to Kovalt. He puts it on the deck, gets his jersey pulled, but no call there as yeah. play continues. Zori Island backs it out. He's taking his time. All the officials wearing orange and black saw the hold, grabbing the <laughs> shirt. Inside goes Zori Island. He can't finish. Kovalt grabs the rebound and in the scuffle, John Paul Yoder gets a handful of arm. It was Koval taking the hit. Yoder with his first it's, foul of the evening. It's just interesting how Parker Krim, just his presence on the floor, his size inside made that rebound end up going to Koval. He, he just takes up space. He's athletic. He does a lot of good things for his team that don't show up on the stat page. In correction, that's the second foul on scored. Yoder as Krim gets a basket. And it's the first lead for Elida, 34-33. He's got seven points in the game. It's way above his average. Summers three doesn't go. Kovalt with the rebound. Here's Island. Ball swung around. That's corn corner three. Splash! Big run for Elida as the fans. Well. They Stand got back up. in the basketball game without David Escorn scoring. He did not score in the opening half, and I picked up a three ball right there. But he he's usually one of their top scorers. That, you know, he comes in there averaging about, uh, what, 11 plus a game, and he hadn't scored in the first half. That three was big for him. Second foul of the evening called against Zori Island. Pirates will inbound from the side. Zori's emotion level has ratcheted up since the opening quarter. He had a great second quarter. He's back doing it again here at quarter number three. Here's Worcester up top, guarded by Krim. Worcester <laughs> backs his way inside, finds Donaldson in the corner. 
Boblet thought about a deep one, but that's going in his face. Good defense right there. Shut off the baseline drive by Watt. Worcester to the basket, spins inside, goes up, floats it in. Uh, there's that muscle we talked about up in the opening quarter. He went right through a really solid player. That score and Crims on the backside trying to rebound. That one lost it out of bounds. So Krim, the last to touch it. According to one referee, thought the other one was going to come in and have a chat, but instead he wipes up the floor. Pirate basketball underneath. See how Bluffton responds now, being behind. They have a basket here in this half, but they're trailing 7-2 to two just in the quarter, in a little over two minutes. Worcester oh. has it stripped away. It was Wash, I'm sorry, Island that got his hand in there. Yeah, he did. Kovalt, nice fake. He goes up, but an offensive foul as Worcester slides over. Kovalt thought he had a move to the goal, and good job by Worcester to step over and take the charge and take the contact. And it is the first foul of the evening against Kovalt, second against the Bulldogs of the quarter. Ball in for Worcester. Going to let him bring it up against Krim. <laughs> Worcester to Boblet, and you're right, the defensive pressure of Elida has definitely increased. Well, I'm going to tell you what, Parker Krim, many people feel is a Division I lineman in football. Yeah. He just full court pressed a good ball handler and, and did a good job of keeping him out from going to the rim. What athleticism he possesses. Two-point lead for the Bulldogs on the Web Insurance Agency scoreboard. Ball in for Ginther. Back now, cut. Back cut, and up goes Summers. He can't finish. Which what you want to do against pressure. You go to the rim, and he did that time, but wasn't unable to finish. Inside goes Wash. Now kicks it out. Koval three. No good. Donaldson rebound. I think the defender might have got a handle on that. That ball came up short. Here's transition the other way. And Ginther can't finish. But a foul on the rebound. They're going to call Parker Krim for the contact. It's his second, team third of the quarter. He leaned in just enough to get the call. Seth Sharp in for Koval. Donaldson will inbound. Here's Summers. Boblet thought he had enough space, doesn't finish. Etzcorn with the rebound, here we go. He lied it quickly the other way. Etzcorn spins in, he's fouled and scores! <laughs> David Etzcorn through contact, and Etzcorn gives up a few inches to Blake Summers, but not phased. Etzcorn probably about 6'2". Another one of those strong football players. He's a running back in the, in the football season. He just took that and muscled it up to the rim. Has a chance for a three-pointer and does. That's a Lee's Famous Recipe chicken free throw. It's a five-point lead for Elida. Donaldson able to beat Wash. Pulls up from the elbow. Smooth jumper. That really was a smooth jumper. He took the ball right to the elbow, let the defender back off just a bit. 11 points for Donaldson, lay in no good. And Krim knocks it away and up and in goes Zori Island. A nice physical basketball yeah, game here. Was. And the referees are letting it go <laughs> both did. ends of the floor. This is a great crew, this is great <laughs> basketball. Worcester quickly the other way, collects himself and scores. The pace is really ratcheted up in the Elida's favor, but that time Bluffton got through the press. And, and again. Scored. Some contact, referees Whoa. say no, and Elida makes them pay. Metzger Financial Services timeout taken by Coach Tabler after the three-point bucket. Gives Amari Wash 11 and Elida a 45-39 lead as we step aside. Tonight's scoreboard is sponsored by Webb Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and Bluffton. 45-39, Elida leads on that Webb Insurance Agency scoreboard. A Metzger Financial Services timeout taken by Coach Tabler. And 
Looks like he's going to go into a three-quarter court look, maybe yeah. a 1-2-2 here. Two, two here. Bluffton got through his full court pressure the last couple of times. He's going to change it up and go to his half court track. With Evan Jackson on the top, long arms makes it difficult to reverse the ball. And the Pirates with no problems, but they're not able to finish. A good look inside for Worcester is having a nice night. This one tipped away, but grabbed back by Island. I'm sorry, that's Wash. Now here's Island. Nice closeout by Ginther as Etzcorn had some space momentarily. Here's Seth Sharp. Ball knocked away from Evan Jackson. Right ahead. Five turnovers in the opening quarter. They've had two in the last 11 minutes. Here's Donaldson. Here's Worcester. Now Summers with the height advantage. Gives it up to Donaldson. He takes a deep one. Splash. Merrick Donaldson, the, the sharpshooter. That is from the volleyball line. That was way out there. Pirates back to within three. Sharp trying to go baseline. A good fight for the basketball, but ultimately a jump ball, and it will stay with Elida. Kovalt checking back in, as is Parker Krim. Amari Wash going to get a break. Evan Jackson yeah, coming out as well. Wash has expended a tremendous amount of energy in this quarter. I would bet he's going to get a short break, and I'll bet Island will get one, two, before we head into the fourth. Here's Island in for Kovalt. Now Sharp. Island gets it back. Island three in and out. Good box out by Worcester as Donaldson comes in to grab it. Elida now five of ten from the three point line. And Krim, Krim comes in for another one. Krim jump stop goes up and finishes. That was really well done from the defensive end, but also the power move at the goal. Really nice job, Parker Krim. Average is 3.6. He has nine. Well, and left Summers alone. left alone yeah. and makes him pay. And then he made a mistake. He went to cover up his man who already he switched, and he made a mistake going back to get his guy and left a three-point shooter open. Summers has 11. They go inside for Krim. That time he's blocked by Summers. Donaldson comes out. Ball taken away. Zori Island with the steal in the nice gather, but not able to finish. And the Pirates tip it out. Bluffton fans not happy. I could see that here, though. Here comes uh, Wash back in the Island's break, I believe. He missed that layup. He tried to ease it up to the rim, and he just missed it that time. And he is a tired young man, putting out a lot of energy in this quarter. Pirates go to his own look here. Little one, two, two here as Merrick Donaldson extended at the top. Kovalt inside, here's Sharp. Sharp finds Krim, Krim can't finish. Wright pulls in the rebound. Really good pass. Just unable to gather himself to score. Off to the chance to tie or take a lead. Summers trying to take care of business himself. Rebound pulled in by Edscorn. And Edscorn, a nice move inside, but he's blocked. <laughs> those are my favorite plays uh, in high school basketball, Mark Shine. Uh, those, those slow two steps, because yeah. every fan in the gym thinks it's a travel right. and it's not, right? You yeah. can take two steps, whether they're fast or slow, that time slow exactly steps. Right. That's where I went to Coach Tabor. Coach, put me in. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like high school kids, man, they're something. And Pirates chase Wash all the way up the court, but he keeps his handle. That's a tough young man right there dribbling the basketball. Five counts on. Just got it off. Ball to the top with Seth Sharp. Sharp to Kovalt. Swung around. Etzcorn tries the deep one. It's short. Donaldson grabs the rebound. 22 on the clock. Third quarter of action. Pirates trail two. They're going to wait for the last shot. 
Donaldson to the elbow. Summers. Here's Boblet. Three on the clock. Boblet finds himself open from the mid range. Shot no good, and the quarter comes to an end. Elida leading 47 45 as we take a break. The final frame coming up after this on WOSN. Tonight's free throws are sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Welcome back for the start of the fourth quarter here in Bluffton. It's the Pirates trailing the Elida Bulldogs 47-45 as Wade Ginther goes inside. He can't finish. Brody Summers with the rebound. He does. And the game tied at 47 Time Brody Summers went with the muscle play. Now a nice pass inside as Sharp goes up and he loses the handle. A good third quarter of action there as the Lida went on a run and found themselves in the lead. Bluffton won the opening quarter 21-13, but the middle two quarters went the way of Elida 34-24. Then this opening basket were tied at 47. Here's Brody Summers, thought about the back door. Summers in trouble here, now gets it away. It's Boblet. Summers, wild pass, but Ginther grabs it, and Ginther, a great finisher of the rim, at the rim, excuse me, finishes with his left. Elida, as they do, quickly the other way. No call there, probably the right call, but a foul on the rebound. And they're going to get Brody Summers with the foul. His second first of the quarter for the Pirates. And Wash goes right off the back. It stays with them. I'm sorry, that was Zori Island. It went off the back of the defender but wasn't able to finish. Good plan. Pirates with the first four points of the quarter. Ball to the corner. Amari Wash dribbles up. Ball swung around. Here's Wash. Wash floats it. No good. Kovalt finds the rebound and puts it in to tie it up. Boblet will bring it up against Seth Sharp. Penetration dribble. Kovalt found the seam in the zone to get the rebound and score. Boblet catch and shoot. Got it. Bluffton has hit their last three three-point field goals in a row. And not enough contact for a foul. And that's the way this game's been called. Summers, nice pass as Ginther not able to get the handle. Just kind of guided it up to the rim, but can't put it through. They backdoored it real well, just didn't finish. Ball to the middle, jump shot, good. We haven't seen Elida attack the middle a whole lot of yeah. in this zone, but that time, a nice catch and shoot mid range jumper from Koval. He becomes a double figure scorer with 11 now. Inside goes Boblet, and I don't know if Summers meant to do that, but he gets two points nonetheless. It counts. To the rim, the foul. The ball doesn't roll in, but a good attack from Zori Island, and he'll get two Lee's famous recipe chicken free throws. Reminding you that Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's is where home style happens. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, your free throw sponsor this evening. Third foul on Brody Summers, first player in any type of foul trouble in the game. Dory Island, he's a 65% free throw shooter, puts that one in. Krim back in the game along with that scorn. Fifty four fifty two the Pirates lead on the Web Insurance Agency scoreboard free throw up and good fourteen points for Zori Island as the Pirates break the pressure and the layup good by Brody Summers 
Parker Krim was the goalie that time, and he left the goal crease, left the guy open for a long pass. Good job of finding the open man. Here's Kovalt, runs into trouble, then kicks it out to Island. Island for three, gets it, ties the game at 56. He faked the pass and got his defender to leave him and give him enough space to make that. Here's Summers. Dory Island looking at 14. Or 17, excuse me. Missed that last three timeout. Coach Bobla will take a Metzger Financial Services timeout. We'll take it to 448. Game tied at 56. We'll be right back on WOSN. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. And tonight's premier sponsor for the Elida Bulldogs is John Stocker DDS, providing dental care for high school sports fans. I'll tell you what, there might be some players out there that need to see Dr. Stocker after <laughs> this one. It has been physical. These guys punching each other in the mouths, preferably, of course, not. Literally, but this game tied at 56. Nice roll as Summers gets inside. He's fouled in the basket. Slip screen coming out of the timeout. Good call by Coach Boblin. Well executed by his team. And they get Xcorn with the foul on that one. That's his first and the least famous recipe chicken free throw coming up for Brody Summers. That one rolls in. Pirates lead 59-56. Kovalt. Krim, his pass taken away. Tried to go short corner to the man rolling down. Couldn't quite get the ball to him. Worcester finds Brody Summers. Here's Donaldson. Now Blake Summers. Gives it to Brody. Nice cut from Ginther, doesn't get the ball. Worcester goes baseline. Pirates taking their time. Here's a three, got it. Merrick Donaldson knocks it in. He has 17 points and extends the lead to six. When he catches the ball in rhythm with his feet set, turnover. Ginther goes up and a nice job Drawing the foul as Zori Island will get tacked with his third. So to the line for two free throws is Wade Ginther. Again, your free throws tonight sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Ginther misses the first. Ginther is typically a 70% free throw shooter. And with the unique form as well, if you look close, he kind of puts the ball right at his eye. Yep. Flicks it in. 63-56. Good run coming out of the timeout. It was tied at 56 in the timeout. Last seven points have gone the way of the Pirates. Blocked by Summers. Edscorn with the rebound, smartly backs it out. Summers might have four or five blocks. I haven't been keeping track here. Kovalt thought about a mid-range jumper. He's in a little trouble, now kicks it out. And a timeout taken by Coach Tabler. That's a Metzger Financial Services timeout. The Pirates on top, 63-56. We'll be back soon with more on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard is sponsored by Webb Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and Bluffton. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. 63-56 the score here as the Pirates take a timeout. 
The uh, last seven points have gone the way of the Pirates. Good, good offensive execution in the long three stroked in by Donaldson. And correction, that was a timeout taken by Elida. Both teams with two timeouts remaining, both teams with two fouls. Donaldson had 41 threes on the season and missed six games. Is that correct? That's Something correct. Like that. yeah. yeah. Really good shooters in our area. And we're going to get chances to watch him play again one more year. He's just a junior. Ball in for Elida Edscorn. Gets a guy in the air. Step back three. Misses everything. Pirates with a seven point lead. They'll play Allen East right here on Friday. That's a game you can watch on our network. Boblet brings it up, gives it to Ginther. Just over three minutes to play in this one. Hard fought game. Great non-conference game late in the year as Seth Sharp will get tacked with his second foul, third against Elida. That's a pretty good foul. That's going to be, the, I think, the third team foul of the quarter. And they're going to get to the point here under three minutes where they want to foul and put Bluff into the free throw line. And that was a good aggressive foul right there. Worcester dribbles inside. Worcester patiently goes up and scores. I like your description of patiently, Evan. That's exactly right. Look at that move. My goodness, Zori Island slides inside and scores. He has 19 points, leading all scorers. Zori came in averaging 9.8. He has had a wonderful game. And he pokes it away. That was Wash poking it away. Excuse me. Zori Island does poke it, but Coach Boblett takes the Metzger Financial Services timeout. He'll have one remaining. 2.20 on the clock. We'll be right back as well. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. John Stocker, DDS, is tonight's premier sponsor for the Elida Bulldogs, providing dental care for high school sports fans. Welcome you back to Bluffton High School. Evan Skilleter and Mark Shine on the mics. Jacob O'Neill on the camera and the editing work for you this evening. 2.20 to go here in the fourth quarter. The Pirates lead 65-58 over Elida in a game that has been back and forth all evening. We've seen a ton of runs from each team. Worcester inside to Donaldson. He's open for three. No good. Fight for the rebound, and it's off the head of Blake Summers. So Elida will take it back. Good check out by the team in orange that time. Two middle eight to go. They need some points in a hurry, and then ratchet up that full court defense, see if they can get some turnovers. Left them with nine turnovers in the game, and none in quarter four. Inside, and the foul! Oh. Zori Island uses the muscle, goes off the glass, scores, and he'll have a Metzger Financial Services, I'm sorry, at least famous recipe, yeah. chicken free throw. We appreciate all of our sponsors. His first step to the goal, and of course he's left-handed, which is a little bit deceptive for some defenders. He gets the free throw to go. 65-61. Sharp almost with a steal. Ball ahead to Blake Summers. Summers the pass to Donaldson to let him like a quarterback would. Hmm. Now Worcester and a foul called. Bluffton's in kind of that uh, no man zone a little bit right now. There's a lot of time left with a four point lead. You want to take a, a positive time, take time off the clock, but likewise you can't go into a full blown delay. It's too long of a game left. Throw the ball over the top, it's Ginther. Four team fouls for Elida, so the next one puts the Pirates at the line. Summer's going to line up a three. There you Got go. It. Be aggressive, and they were. Spin inside and a foul, but maybe a good one there from Donaldson preventing the layup against the guy that has finished really well tonight at the rim. Zori Island 
22 points. I think he laid on the floor there out of exhaustion. He has really turned it up here, particularly in the last three quarters of this game. 22 on the game. Wash has 11. Cobalt has 11, but he has been the, the spark in this game. First one drops. Thank you to Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken for sponsoring our free throws this evening. 23 points for Mr. Island. Zori gets the second to go as well. 68-63 the score. Pirates working against the pressure. Got to get going. Now they do. Not a good spot to have it, but a skip pass over to Donaldson. Gets him out of trouble. Uh-oh, wide open for Boblet. Can't get it to go. That's one of the guys you want shooting the basketball if you're bluffed in. Wash can't finish. Ginther ahead. Worcester, nice pass, unselfish oh, yes basketball. Super pass across the lane. No finish from Etzcorn Ball. Tipped out of bounds, last touch by the Pirates. Seven point lead with 47.9. Hey, stay tuned after this one for the Stolly Insurance Hustle Award and check out highlights of other Stolly Hustle Award winners on the WOSN YouTube page. You can also find our old broadcasts on there as well as profiles of local athletes. And much more, three-pointer, Etzcorn, that's a big one. Huge shot on a nice pass. Draw the defense and bury it. Coach Tabler takes a timeout with 39.9 on the clock. And Mark Shine, we are getting very, very close to <laughs> my favorite time of year uh, in Ohio, in Northwest Ohio specifically, tournament basketball. We have a ton of great boys teams, a ton of great girls teams. We'll have a lot of great representation uh, from this area moving through the tournament. Really, really looking forward to the tournament. We can give you, give you where these two teams are headed. Elida was the number one seed in their district in Division Two. They will play at home on March 31st. They get the winner of Upper Sandusky and Defiance. They've already beaten Defiance once this year. Bluffton was the number five seed in what might be the best district in the state. We look at who's in there. They were the number five seed. Uh, they're going to play Columbus Grove. And if they are the winner of that particular game, that will be uh, I sure wrote the date down on that. But anyway, they play Columbus Grove, uh, the number eight seed. That will be here. Uh, and then the winner will play Wayne Trace, who's the third seed. Wayne Trace, Ottawa, Glendorf, Coldwater, Spencerville, Bluffton. Um, upper Center Valley is going to win their league. Uh, I left somebody out, I'm sure. What a, that is just a tremendous sectional district we're going to have at Lima Senior. It is unreal, and it feels like every year that section and that district produced uh, so many great games. We've seen Bluffton and Wayne Trace. We've seen Ottawa Glandorf and Wayne Trace. A lot of good free throw shooters on the floor. Let's see how they choose to play it. Ball in for Donaldson, skips it over to Ginther. Ginther to Worcester. Worcester to Boblet, and <laughs> now they'll foul. Wash was trying to get the foul, and the official wouldn't call it. And they had a hold of for a little bit, ran a couple of seconds off the clock before that occurred. That was just Wash's second foul, but we'll go to the free throw line. The shooter is Taryn Boblet. Taryn's a 63% free throw shooter on the season. Big free throws here, makes that one. The light is in a spell of games right here. They played <laughs> Finley, they played uh, um, St. Saint, Saint, uh, Saint Mary's Memorial last weekend. Now this one on the road. Both free throws good. It's a six point lead. Layup no good. Summers gets fouled. He'll head to the line. Blake Summers tonight with 14 points. Three Pirates in double figures. Three Bulldogs in double figures as well. Blake's also a 62% free throw shooter on the season. See what he does here. Often is 6 of 10 from the free throw line on the game. Double bonus time. First free throw no good from Mr. Summers. No matter what happens here, Elida will need a quick one. 
Second one goes. That makes it a three possession game. That was huge. To the basket goes Island. Nice pass outside, but Wash can't handle it. It goes back to the Pirates. He had a little bit too much mustard on it, and Wash was trying to load it up before he was actually able to secure it. Ball was moving quicker than he thought it would be. 16 on the clock. Elida will not foul, and that will do it. We want to thank our sponsors again, Web Insurance Agency, Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, Metzger Financial Services, and Dr. John Stocker, DDS. Your final here in Bluffton, 73-66. The Pirates over the Bulldogs. We will step aside, but stay tuned. We will give out our Stolly Insurance Hustle Award when we return. It's high school basketball on WOSN. Welcome back to Bluffton High School, where the Pirates have won their 16th game of the year, 73-66 over the Elida Bulldogs. And Mark Shine, uh, we'll, we'll start with the game here. The Pirates put up 73 points against a pretty good defensive team. What do you have for us? Well, normally that would be correct. Elida gives up right around 52, 53 points a game, and they put 73 on, including 28 in the fourth quarter. Let's look at our numbers in the game. Uh, the Bluffton Pirates 21 of 40 from two-point range. Elida was 20 of 51. Elida was 6 of 13 from the three-point line. Bluffton was 8 of 19. Bluffton shot uh, 7 of 12 with the free throw line. Elida was 8 for 9. 35 rebounds, including 15 on the offensive end for Elida. 33 rebounds, 9 on the offensive end for Bluffton. Elida lost the turnover battle 11 to 9. And part of that 28-point quarter, Bluffton did not turn the ball over in the fourth quarter. Good finish for the Pirates, who again move to 16 and 4. Elida drops to 13 and 6. And now it's time to award the Stolly Insurance Hustle Award. Check out highlights of tonight's Stolly Hustle Award winner on the WOSN YouTube page. And Mark, we talked during that break, and there were quite a few fellas from Bluffton who were worthy of this award. But when you think about hustle, you look at guys that perform on both sides and Blake Summers with a big evening. That he did. I, I thought there were a lot of guys. In fact, you have to name somebody who didn't play hard sure. in a game like this because the effort was so good uh, on both sides. But Blake Summers with the points that he scored this evening, his rebounding inside, his ability to block shots and alter things in the interior. He passed the basketball very well as, uh, as, as in addition to that. I thought Blake Summers just kind of stood out among all the players this evening uh, on the Bluffton side of the floor. Congratulations to Blake Summers, 15 points. We didn't keep official track of no. blocks, but right around four or five, maybe six for the young man in white this evening. Want to thank our sponsors one more time. Web Insurance Agency, Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, Metzger Financial Services, John Stocker DDS, and Stolly Insurance. Want to thank the Bluffton High School Athletic Department for their hospitality this evening. And as always, want to thank you, the viewer, for tuning into high school basketball on WOSN. For Mark Shine. And for Jacob O'Neill, I've been Evan Skilleter signing off one more time from Bluff and the Pirates 73, the Bulldogs 66. Have a great night and God bless.